Well, Jamal Khashoggi has spoken out on Saudi policies in Yemen, Qatar and within the kingdom in commentaries for the Washington Post. His colleagues there say they will not rest until they find out what happened to him. The Post's global opinions editor, Karen Atia, who you just saw in that piece, joins us now for more on all of this. Uh, Karen, Jamal worked for, for you as a journalist for the Washington Post. Obviously, he wrote about failures in his home country. How concerned was he that he was a target? Um, you know, uh, in, in conversations that we had, uh, he definitely expressed um, definitely concerns about his family. He was really pained about pressures on his family. He would tell me, you know, they're trying to get to me by, by, by using them. Um, as far as whether or not, you know, he, he faced any pressures, um, he told me, you know, the, he told me that the, the authorities told him that Jamal, okay, you can do what you want, but why does it have to be the Washington Post, you know? Um, despite that, again, I would ask him, is he okay? Are you okay? And he just said, you know, I, I still have to do this. I still have to write. I still have to, to say the truth um, because not just in, in Saudi Arabia, but across the region, he just uh, saw the, the um, intolerance, I think, for, for criticism and for dissent. And so he really just felt it was his, his duty to do that for, for his country. And um, he loved it. He loved, he loved writing. I, I appreciated you know, his enthusiasm for his work. Um, but he didn't want to be a dissident. He, he didn't want to be this opposition figure in exile. He just wanted, in some ways, to advise um, Mohammed bin Salman advised the prince on the right way to go for Saudi Arabia. Turkish officials through anonymous sources say that he was murdered and we just heard in my colleague's piece Nick Robertson that funeral preparations are already underway. What goes through your mind given the possibility that he may have been assassinated? I mean, it just reinforces uh, the fact that um, words are powerful and that uh, how important he was and how important what he was saying was. And if anything, it's, it's a monstrous, grotesque crime. If this is true, this is beyond the pale. And, and now, you know, I've heard from um, other uh, uh, Saudis who are living in exile around the world, um, others from the Gulf who are scared um, because of this, who are frightened because of uh, the grim possibilities. So, um, you know, for me, working at the Washington Post, working in Washington, this also calls into question, you know, if true, um, the Saudi relationship. Um, again, the Saudis deny that they have uh, any hand in any you know foul play they insist that he left the consulate so we're still waiting um, for proof positive of their claims that Jamal is alive so I, I just think this this sh should have profound repercussions for anybody involved whoever is involved absolutely and we certainly do hope that he is alive of course the US president uh, typically a US president would speak out in support of the free press when something like this happens given jamal is of course a permanent u.s resident what would you like to hear from the administration when it comes to this case <laughs> i would like to hear from this administration that we stand behind the values that we've always espoused to the rest of the world that we've always said we ship to the rest of the world i, I am heartened by um, a number of uh, congressmen, um, Senator Chris Murphy, uh, Marco Rubio, uh, Jerry Connolly have made uh, st strong statements, at least on Twitter, about Jamal's case specifically. Um, and yes, in a perfect world, uh, the United States needs to speak up and needs to press um, on the Saudis on this case, um, as well as the Turks, but in particular the Saudis, for answers and uh, transparency, absolutely. Absolutely. Karen Atia, our thoughts are with you and your colleagues, and we do hope you get some positive news soon. Thanks so much. Th thank you so much.